Hello everybody, thank you for joining me again. I'm sorry it's been a couple of weeks since I've been on here. I was on holiday and then had a little bit of a cold, so just kind of waiting for my voice to sound half decent again. Um, and on that note, I'll talk a little bit at the start here, but then I am going to do a voiceover in a couple of days when things are a little bit less gruff for you. So today's video is going to be about accessories and how we accessorize. And what I thought I would do is go through a number of really classic outfits for you. Start them off just with the basic pieces and then I'm going to build the accessories up for you so you can see what accessories I'm choosing and why certain ones work and why other ones don't work. So as always everything will be linked. I link the UK and the American links and just before we get into today's video just to say yes I do international styling for people all over the world. You don't need to email me first of all just go straight onto my website pick a time, pick a, a slot and we'll see you online for whenever you've booked. We've got Claire working on that pretty much full time now. I'm on there as well. If you don't see an appointment time for myself, it means that it's already gone. So you will have to go forward for probably about three or four months to get myself. But Claire is amazing. She's worked with me for many, many years. I trained her all those years ago and she is incredibly good. And I'm always kind of there in the background anyway, should you need to speak to me. I thought I'd start by just showing you a little bit of a close-up on the jewellery that I'm going to be wearing today. I've also got Zoe in the office. Zoe's got dark hair and a different skin complexion to myself and she loves wearing silver. Um, we both wear from Monica Vinader, obviously. We love the brand. Why do we love it? Because it lasts. It's really sustainable. They use 100% recycled 18 karat gold and recycled silver. It lasts really well and I find that you only need sort of two or three of their pieces and maybe a couple of different pendants to always have something suitable to wear in your wardrobe. Always changing my pendant, for example, like this one here, and putting it onto my bracelet. I think it's a really sustainable way of creating different looks with the same pieces of jewellery. So this is actually another bracelet that I really, really love at the moment. I'm wearing it all the time. And one of the reasons is because it's so easy to put on. Can you see it's got that? That really strong stiff edge there where most bracelets are sort of loose right till the end. What that allows you to do is to put the bracelet on really easily because this end is stiff and it's not flying about everywhere. Now do remember if you have got more of a floppy bracelet, <laughs> I'm not sure of the exact terminology for this, um, but you can always use one of these tools. I've shown this before, it's from Amazon, they're really inexpensive and you just grab the end of your bracelet like that and you put it round your wrist and then you have the other hand free to do up your bracelet. And the ring that I'm wearing today is this one. It is beautiful. Now I find I've got really quite chunky fingers. They're not slender at all. The fact that there's little gaps in between mean it's not a big thick band. I find if you have got a slightly heavier finger and you wear just one thick chunky band then that makes your fingers look a lot chunkier and I think it's probably why the three stacking rings always work really well on me as well Be again because you can see the skin in between it's just not one thick band and the beauty of the stacking rings is obviously that we can put them on any finger that we want we can stack them in any order and I think often if I'm not wearing a bracelet then I will spread them out across my fingers but if I am wearing a bracelet then I'd probably just put them all on one finger. Oh I don't think I've shown you this bracelet either. Oh so I love this one so as you can see I can just pull it into place and then push it back on. It's got the lovely Monica Vinader logo there. On the front this can be personalised and in fact a lot of the Monica Vinader jewellery can be personalised and often that personalisation is for free as well. So the last thing to show you closer is the necklaces. So I have got three on right now. There's one really fine one in there. 
followed by the star, followed by this one, which I have shown before, and it's a beautiful locket. And it's another way that you can personalize your jewelry. And the thing about having three is that I put, I always wear them in different combinations. So it might be sometimes that that one is too much because perhaps I've got a blouse on and it's too fluffy around here. So that's when I just wear that one. Sometimes the finer one is just enough, especially if I've got a big earring, for example, then that's when I might just wear that fine one by itself. But having the three in combination, all at different levels as well, allows me to adapt my jewellery based on my clothes. So I'm not buying lots of different jewellery all the time. As I've mentioned, I swap these pendants around, put them on my bracelets and try and make them really, really versatile. If you follow the links that are in the description box for the UK or the comments box for America, then that link will take you to the exact products that I'm wearing. And that includes the length of the chain as well. But generally speaking, the bigger one, I always go for the longer necklace, then I tear it back from there. This next necklace is beautiful. It's from Monica Vinader again. And as you can see, it's these beautiful gemstones in green. And I thought I would show it to you because it's a fantastic way to introduce a little bit of colour into your wardrobe. My little rule, and it's quite an old fashioned rule, but I find that it works on a lot of people still, myself included. And that is when you've got a bit of striking jewellery like this with a colour like that, pick one other item in the same colour. It doesn't have to be exactly the same colour, it's just the same colour hues. And when you wear these two pieces together, everything will come together and it will look really, really nice and styled. It's kind of one of those... If you're not sure what to wear, always think about wearing two items of the same colour at any one time and you will look styled and put together. I think I've shown this on Instagram and if you don't follow me on Instagram, please go head over there. I'll put the reel up at the side of me because I share sort of um, daily, weekly or whenever, I, whenever I've got a chance, I share my outfit on there but you get to see a few extra little things over on there as well. And the final bit of jewellery to show you before I head all the way back over there are these really cute little earrings. Now I often get asked what type of earring goes with everything. My answer is always the same. It's kind of like a hoop earring. I think that just stands the test of time. I've got two beautiful ones from Monica Vinader but I have to say I think these are my new everyday favourites. Now Zoe also ordered these in the silver. Actually I think they are the most perfect day-to-day earring that I have found so far that are a little bit different from a hoop. Okay so starting off with a very plain pair of blue jeans, ankle crop jeans and a white t-shirt and just my watch on. Start by adding a necklace so that it breaks up that area. Add a blazer or a jacket of some sort. This one is a beautifully textured one from Reese. And then here's some translucent bands that I use for ruching up my sleeves so that my wrists are on display. When your wrists are on display, it's going to make you look smaller all over. Then pick up a belt. The one on the right is from Reese, on the left is from Marks and Spencers. And both are a mock croc effect, which adds a little bit of texture to the outfit. Now we've grabbed a bag of the same colour as the belt, just to help to bring the whole outfit together. The shoes are from Marks and & Spencers and they're an on-trend, thick-soled loafer. These are really good for the climate out there at the moment. They're a little bit sturdier than your flat loafers. But that said, Marks & Spencers are also doing this really nice pair of flat loafers that do come up a little bit small, which is unusual for Marks & Spencers. The chunkier loafers, however, are coming up rather big. Now moving on to the loafers I showed in my last video. These are so incredibly comfy, it's unbelievable. All of these loafers will be linked 
But I just wanted to show you that whether it's the more square-toed ones or the pointed ones, the common theme amongst them all is that they're lighter in colour. That's helping to keep the whole outfit lighter and it's also helping to bring the outfit together. So we've got the jacket and the shoes the same colour. The same applies here with the boots. The boots and the bag are bringing things together. It's the concept of always wearing two items of the same colour at any one time. It's an old fashioned rule but it works and if you don't feel confident in putting things together or putting outfits together, if you follow this rule I promise you you will always look styled and put together. Here you'll see the difference that jewellery actually makes, even down to the strap on the bag. It adds extra dimension, extra interest and just makes the outfit look more styled. Here we've styled the same outfit up with some trainers, so keeping it practical for meeting friends or a day out shopping, just making sure though that the bag and the belt there are bringing the items together. But if you don't like the lighter tones then grab a black belt, this is the same belt from Reese and I've also teamed it up with a black bag and a black pair of small heeled boots. But on the left you can see the contrast with the lighter boots and the lighter bag so it's up to you which one you prefer. What you don't want to do though is mix your brown bag with your black boots. Okay, can you see now how the outfit isn't pulled together? Now this is down to personal taste but personally I don't like the long boots with it. I feel it looks very dated and old fashioned. If we show the short boots on the left hand side I think that's a lot more of a modern look than the one on the right hand side. But it's not that the long boots don't go, it's just that I feel it's a dated look. So now looking at how to accessorise a pleated skirt. Now I'm wearing a gorgeous jumper from Reese, but it's not looking so gorgeous at the moment because on my small frame at five foot three and a little bit, I can't afford to have that jumper hanging out. So I need to put it in the front, but if I do so, I'm going to create a bulge because it's quite a thick jumper. So instead, I'm going to tuck it into my bra strap and that allows it to fall really nicely, roll up the sleeves, and it looks completely different than it did a couple of seconds ago. Or if that's not an option for you, just grab a belt, put it round your waist and use the belt to pull the jumper over the belt and then it will stay in place all day. We're grabbing these long boots from Marks and Spencers, they were last year, I'll see if I can find something similar. And straight away you've got a really nice casual elegant outfit but that could do for the office or it could do for a night out. We've added the black bag in there, we could have added a beige bag if we wanted to but we're picking up on the black in the skirt as well which all helps to balance the whole outfit out. And there's no reason why you can't put a pair of black boots with this outfit, but I only have these ones with the chain detail on. So this is where I need to consider which handbag to use. This black one here also has a lot of gold and a lot of bling on it. And I just feel that that handbag, as well as the chain detail on the shoes, would just be a little bit too much. So instead I would just pick up more of a black plain handbag so that I didn't overpower and make the outfit too glitzy if I was looking to wear it for more of a casual event. Or a black sock boot is actually a very flattering alternative. Because it's tight along the ankle, the ankle remains slim. And when we see a slim ankle, we assume that everything else uh, that follows that ankle is also slim. So can you see on the right hand side with the longer boot. It actually makes my legs look chunkier than the sock boot. So if you feel that perhaps you're a little bit hippier and that you don't suit skirts or skirt skirts make you feel broader, then go for a tight ankle boot instead. Or as an alternative, you could use a brown short ankle cowboy boot. They look really nice as well and I've matched that with a brown bag. Now what doesn't look so great on me is a very on-trend loafer. 
And I think the main reason for that is because I am short. I think if you have the length behind you, you could probably get away with this look. You'll see it a lot on all the influencers on Instagram, but you really do need that taller, more slender build in order to pull it off. And the same goes for the little flat ballet pump. These are actually a really nice ballet pump from Marks and Spencers but the two-tone colour just make my legs look even shorter and I just don't think I can get away with this look at all. And the same goes for the flat loafer. For me, it's giving a slightly dated, quite a twee look and it's not really the overall look that I'm trying to achieve when wearing a pleated skirt. And being honest, it's a very popular look that I see when people are dressing to go to work. But with this silk blouse on here and the twee shoes, it makes for a very old fashioned look. So instead, I would style up with a little black funky boot. The heel is very small on these. It's literally a small kitten heel. I've added the belt in as well and then brought the bag. Now that overall look is, in my opinion, a lot more stylish than the image on the left with the flat ballet pumps. Oh and here he comes, he never wants to miss out on his fame on YouTube. Here we go Monty, loves the bum rub, he's never far behind me, he's always sitting in and around the studio. Next we're going to look at how we accessorize jogging sets. Now this is actually a jumpsuit from Varley, but often I will wear perhaps a cream pair of jogging pants and a matching cream hoodie. It doesn't have to be cream, it can be gray, black, whatever color you want, but I do usually go for a matching set. And right here I have kept my jewelry on, so it just elevates that look up slightly. And I've paired it with some beige long tight ankle boots. I've accessorized with a long wool coat rather than a sporty coat, just again so it elevates that look and makes it look a little bit more appropriate for my age. And here on the left, you, you can see that I've added in a navy long coat that works just as well. But it works well because I've got a little bit of sort of dark gray navy on my trainers. It doesn't go so well if I put black shoes or black trainers. Can you see that? It's too heavy and it's too dark. The contrast between the colors just doesn't work. So instead, I've changed things up again. I've put a short green khaki jacket on and I've kept the bag really casual with my really big Anine Bing tote bag. I have found another great tote bag from H&M, which I will link. And I've just kept the white trainers on to keep it simple and fresh looking. And if jogging pants are a little bit too casual for you, then these Reese trousers that I bought last year, but that are still available, and they do them in a lot of other colorways as well, are fantastic. I still wear them now. I've teamed them with a brown mohair jumper, and I've also brought in a brown bag as well. I've kept the trainers on for a really nice relaxed look, but there's no reason why you couldn't pair the, this with some heels. These are just some very small old kitten heels from Zara, but straight away that has elevated that look up just with the changing of one pair of shoes. It's a really nice way to do smart casual these days, either for the office or just meeting friends. But have a look at the outfit as soon as I add some black trainers to it. Personally, I think the outfit on the right looks very dull in contrast to the outfit on the left. And it just doesn't look as stylish. The white just adds a pop of fresh color and balances the entire outfit out. Next, we have a classic pair of leather cropped trousers. You don't have to wear real leather, faux leather trousers work just as well, but the cropped nature means that they work with lots of different types of shoes. I've paired it here with a stripy jumper, and as you can see, I'm using my elastic bands to roll up the sleeves. And you can see from the two pictures there, the style, styling difference it makes when your sleeves are rolled up. And don't forget the jewellery. I'm not focusing on it again because I did it at the start, but the jewellery's in my wrists and on my neck at all times. 
add a bag and that will help bring in the darker leather trousers and here I've styled on the right with a chunkier loafer and on the left a finer loafer or a mule shoe. The only thing about the mules is that it's getting a little bit colder outside. These are the two loafers that I've been using to style throughout the video. This one is from H&M and is slightly more patenty, shiny. And the next one is from Marks and Spencers. I'd say that the Marks and Spencers ones are coming up very big. I'm usually a four and a half and I've had to have a three and a half in the Marks and Spencers ones. The H&M ones have come up true to size. And of course you can wear any of the flats that we've seen so far. So on the le left hand side we've got the Marks and Spencers two-toned ballet pump followed by the pointed loafer followed by the chunkier Marks and Spencers cream loafer and then the Marks and Spencers square-toed loafer. So hopefully that gives everybody some sort of choice in there. And here it is as an outfit as a whole with a lighter shoe on. So a, a lot better for the milder weather, but perhaps not so practical when the heavier weather comes in. Now, as you will see here in the comparison pictures, I've got my jumper hanging down, which actually means that it cuts my legs off and makes them look a lot smaller. But it's a look that I don't mind a lot of the time if I just want casual. But as you can see here now on the left, I've just tucked that jumper up a little bit and it probably makes my legs look a little bit longer. But if I really want to increase the length of my legs, then I will go for the same coloured boot and this is a tight leather ankle boot. You can also put your bag over as a cross body bag, particularly if you've got a large bust area. This is going to help to break up the bust area up. So these are the shoes in a little bit more detail. They are from last year, but I have found some equivalent ones for you from this year. So they're a black square toed leather boot. Now this is what I don't think you should wear with them. So this is a long leather boot that I love. They're from Marks and Spencers. They're incredibly comfortable. And again, I would size down on them. However, the leather boot and the leather trouser is just taking that sort of biker look a little bit too far for me. But this is easily rectified. Instead of the leather trousers, I would simply wear a black legging. So right now I'm wearing a legging from Lululemon. I also wear them from Adenola. Both are equally as comfortable, really high-waisted and feel like they're really holding you in everywhere. Just make sure that your jumper is long enough to cover your bottom. This one actually isn't quite long enough for me. I bought it in a size small, it's from Mint Velvet, but I'd actually be changing this for a size medium just so it came that little bit lower and I didn't feel like everything was on display. Now, just because you've got some sport leggings on doesn't mean you pair it with your gym sports top. That now dates the outfit quite badly. You want to make sure that if you've got a tighter legging on like that and a chunkier heavy boot, you balance the outfit out by wearing a baggier jacket on top. So you could wear something like this short trench from Arquette, but equally you could wear a long coat as well. Just be mindful that if you are very, very slender on your legs and broader across your torso, wearing a wider jacket and tighter trousers is going to exaggerate your shape even more. So if you know you are larger on top than bottom, I would suggest that you wear a longer coat or a longer mac so it balances out your figure. And don't wear your leggings with a short tight boot either, especially one of a different colour. It's just all too tight on the bottom. My legs are cut off in two different places where the boots come up to my ankle and where the jumper is. Yes, it helps if you tuck the jumper in because you're going to add an extra few inches to your leg length. But generally speaking, it still feels very dated. And if you are going to wear a legging, then I would suggest leaving your jumper to hang free over your bottom area. So changing the look up now using these wide leg trousers from Reese. 
They are really, really comfortable. They've got an elasticated waist. They look fantastic dressed down like this with a pair of Converse and just a striped sweatshirt. Now, when I am dressing casually like this, this is where I probably wouldn't wear your three layers of jewellery. I'd probably pop a couple behind and just keep it a lot more casual and less sort of goldy and blingy. Now, if you did want to elevate this look up, all I've done here is grabbed a belt from Reese, a little animal print one, just to add a little bit of interest. I've paired it with the same blazer that I had on earlier on, and I've teamed the brown bag from Marks and Spencers, and I've put it with some kitten heels. And this is a great example of where the accessories have allowed us to elevate this look up, but the main items, the trousers and the white t-shirt and the jewellery, have all stayed completely the same. And here's a different look using the same navy trousers, so this time I've just paired it with the loafers, and I've paired it with this cream cardigan, which was from H&M. I think this one is sold out, but I have listed some alternatives for you. Now, if wide leg trousers aren't your thing and you need more of a tailored look then we've now swapped these trousers up for a navy pair from H&M but I've created quite a relaxed look so I've added the Marks and Spencers square toed loafers I've left the white t-shirt on and I've paired it with the green khaki jacket but I've kept the bag really simple and relaxed with a large tote bag so a very relaxed look and using exactly the same accessories, I'm now putting the brown belt on from Reese. I'm grabbing my long wool coat cardigan or coatigan. I could have picked up the blazer at this point. It really doesn't matter because the point is my long coat and my blazer are the same colour. My bag matches my belt, which means that it pulls the outfit together. And remember, they don't have to match exactly and I've added on some small little kitten heels. So a really nice, smarter look. But equally, if the heels aren't your thing, I've added in the loafers on the left-hand side. Many of my clients actually will walk to work, for example, in a loafer and then perhaps change into a little kitten heel when they're in the office. Now, I've also shown you here on the right-hand side that a darker loafer also works. It is a little bit of a darker look, but I think it can be a lot more practical if the weather isn't too nice out there. And remember, you could also wear just a little ankle boot if the weather isn't too good and you want an alternative rather than a loafer. That's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Again, if you could press that subscribe button and the thumbs up button, then I would be really grateful. It's what helps my channel to grow. And as long as it continues to grow, then I can continue to bring you new videos. So thank you and I will see you soon. Bye.